Hey gang, Zippo. Um, I've taken a couple days uh, before presenting a video of North American Arms' latest release to uh, honor uh, the heroes and uh, to mourn the loss of the lives uh, in the Connecticut shootings. Um, it's a difficult time for all Americans, even more so when lives are taken by the hands of the mentally unstable or the criminally insane or just the criminals in general who have no love of life, no respect for life. And it's inexcusable. The government is taking a proactive stance to face the problem uh, that does not mean gun control for the law-abiding. That means gun control for those that should not have the firearms. And they're going to be working hand-in-hand -hand with the National Rifle Association. And I certainly hope that a resolution, a proposed resolution, is uh, accepted by both anti-gunners and by Second Amendment rights activists. We all need to be happy in this, in this, uh, and satisfied and content in the end result. Uh, so we should know something towards the end of January, hopefully. Having said that, let's uh, get on to business with North American Arms' latest offering. Um, I'm fighting a cold, so you guys will pop, probably hear me sniffing and sniffing. Um, so pardon me for that. Um, this is North American Arms' second offering of a firearm that retains its cylinder and allows you to reload and unload without removing the cylinder. The first, of course, our beloved North American Arms brake tops, uh, the Ranger. Uh, those that have them, I covet them. Mine is a safe queen and it will never be fired. Um, it's, it's just an absolute work of functional art and North American Arms hand-built all 500 of these pistols and did a fantastic job um, and that is no exception to any of their other firearms they all are works of art and, and are beautiful very well made um, little pistols people please don't call them a Derringer they're not a two shot they're not a single shot they hold five rounds they are a revolver they are just a mini version of a standard size revolver. Um, the Sidewinder is available with both long rifle and magnum cylinders. It's in a magnum frame. You can see that there is a boss down here and that holds the crane with a screw. And the screw is actually a shoulder screw the uh, North American Arms sends you a spare. And I can understand why. If you don't have a specific screwdriver, uh, hollow ground screwdriver ground to properly fit that screw, you're eventually going to booger the screw up. So I did make a specific bit uh, for a screwdriver so that um, I could save the life of the screw as long as possible. But I'm going to show you here. If you look, there are threads at the base, but no threads on the shank. The shank is what the crane rotates on. Okay, so you can see those threads. And I'd highly recommend that uh, you know you guys that are switching barrels back and forth make take a Dremel or a file and make a specific screwdriver bit fit that like a glove. Make sure it seats all the way to the bottom of the groove and that there is no wobble or wiggle in the screwdriver. That will help preserve that screw and keep that screw head looking nice. You know, it won't have any boogers on it. Um, but if not, those screws, they send you an extra and they're available for North American Arms if your screw gets to the point where it's uh, where you don't feel it's uh, safe anymore to uh, use. So. Here's 22 long rifle cylinder, and this is the way it comes. Comes with the pin. This is both the extractor, as you can see, 
has an extractor just like the uh, brake top and then your crane that's the hole that the screw goes through when you mount it into the frame and as you can see it is stamped L for long rifle very well made uh, if you were pull the crane a little bit with the spring tension that's on there uh, you can see that there is a sleeve that's an integral part of the crane that the pin, the retaining pin and extractor is mounted to. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the brake top design but in this case there's a cam here uh, there is a, a rod that extends I'll show you by pulling this out so that rod stays with the firearm but essentially um, you're looking at a very similar design so uh, the brake top probably gave those uh, guys there at the North American Arms Development a good solid base to um, missed it, let's try again, there we go gave them a good solid base uh, in a, in, uh, to get in, uh, into the right direction anyway getting long winded here let's get right down to the function it's got a nice little bead front sight there is a video up currently uh, gun websites uh, is it gun websites? anyway search for the sidewinder you'll find videos uh, on the sidewinder and very good descriptions this gun is left hand user friendly I like that it's left hand user friendly you must pull it into half cock just as you would have to do if you were pulling a pin from the uh, standard North American arms of the removable cylinders. You have to pull it into half cock to clear the hammer from either your safety notch or from uh, which shouldn't be, but on top of one of your rounds so that uh, the hammer is backing out of the way. And you can see I've got the gap here. Make sure you've got that gap there before pulling the extractor pin forward. You pull it forward, I say extractor pin, but you pull it forward and it'll want to drop on its own as you can see. Okay, It fits very nicely. Good tight lock up when you and I'm going to show you guys here that it is unloaded okay the lock up is very tight when your hammer is all the way back and ready to strike uh, your projectile your bullet so pull back and there is a bevel I'll show you on this cylinder here there's a bevel on the end of that right there and that bevel nestles into the back area there you can see as I pull it out where it nestles in and it retains spring tension on that and that spring tension does a couple of things one um, it keeps the pin in place and two it keeps the uh, cylinder pin in the back of the frame engaged into the frame so good solid lockup it's got um, blast shields now which didn't have before and those are dovetailed in I'll show you that you can see here that they are dovetailed into the frame so it's a separate piece and you'll notice on this side there's a couple of notches and I'll show you what those are for here in just a minute but uh, it does give you uh, uh, a grind on this side that's beveled so that if your pin is backwards back that way uh, by pushing this in it will guide that pin back in so that you can engage and lock your cylinder into place All right, it is spring loaded at the front so that when you push closed that will just the tip alone will compress there's a roll pin holding the spring and assembly together on the extractor rod and the retainer rod. So as you see, nice good tight solid lockup. Let's roll it back out again. Back in. Very nice. Now on this side of the frame there is a bevel cut for clearance. I want you guys to look at how close the tolerances are on this. Um, as I pull you can see almost no daylight. You see just a little bit over here on this side if you watch close. There, see it? Okay. That's why that side, that edge, is beveled right there. You can see the bevel. 
so that the crane and the cylinder will rotate out. You look at the bottom, there's a little bit of a boss on the crane that sticks out beyond the frame. That is a positive stop so that when you roll the crane out, the cylinder stops so that it won't over travel. If it over travels, it's going to come into your upper trigger guard and your trigger and you don't want that. <clears throat> there is just enough room to clear as you can see with the magnum cylinder in which is the larger hold cylinder to extract all five but I did notice that this cylinder or, or this chamber and this chamber may hang up on your grip as you're extracting them. So I recommend if you're extracting, do that, roll it, do it again. It should get all five of your rounds out. You press it in, and I press with both thumbs on one on each side, just so it's a good even and I'm not twisting or canting the crane at all. Then you'll hear it click into place. Now right now it's locked over a cylinder, and it used to be you'd look at the back of the firearm to see if it was in the safety position by way of there being only two chambers on the top instead of there being three on top, one completely covered and then one on either side. Uh, that is not in the safety mark. And then there you are in the safety position. Well, with these blast shields, you don't have that luxury of, of being able to look to the back. North American Arms thought of that. And I mentioned earlier the two notches. I'm going to show them to you again. Okay, you got a notch here and a notch here. One's wide, one's narrow. When you replace the cylinder, lock it back in, hold your trigger, pull your hammer back a little bit beyond half cock until the trigger releases. When the trigger releases, that will allow you to rotate your cylinder. You want to just line up the skinny line with a skinny line on the cylinder, and the fat line with the fat line on the uh, frame, and let your hammer forward. You are then in a safety notch. That's what those two notches on that side are for. Now this is a long-winded video, and you know, I'm talking about a bunch of different stuff, but uh, this is a really nice offering from North American Arms. It is going to be a production piece. This is an early bird piece. Now when I say early bird, um, any of North American Arms' uh, first offerings go to anybody who goes to the website and wants to partake in the early bird program. Um, this doesn't necessarily ensure them a lowest serial number, but it does, uh, it does give them a first release, uh, a first offering of, of the firearm prior to it going into mass production and going out into the general public and to the distributors. Having said that, it's a 1.4 inch barrel. The offerings, I believe, I don't know if they're going to retain the 1.4 inch and sell it as well, but there will also be a 2 inch and then a 4 inch. Uh, give you a little bit of size relation here. Let's pop the tape measure out we can get a good idea what a uh, four inch is going to look like here okay let's get right there there you go you can be up decent ways and then the two inch you can see you're going to be about looks like five eighths a little bit over five eighths of an inch longer than the current 1.4 inch offering in that in that general uh, general vicinity, work uh, function and operation is identical to uh, all the other minis. It's a single action: pull the hammer or pull the hammer full back to press the trigger to uh, release the hammer and strike the projectile, strike your bullet, and out it goes. Um, very very nice offering. All American made, made in Provo, Utah. We all had to wait um, six months or better to get our firearms. They're really starting to roll them out now, so I think they've got the uh, all the bugs worked out of the production process, which is great. Um, and there's always gro uh, learning curves as we go, and Sandy has uh, handled every has handled every ride with uh, um, dedication, perseverance, and understanding of uh, of the early bird participants anticipation for this item and uh, him and his team have done very well at uh, finally um, keeping us appeased and apprised of, of the happenings and goings on. Now you'll note 
a regular production sidewinder will have an SW. That's uh, the projected prefix will be an SW preceding the actual serial number. Those who partook in the early bird program, which we believe to be between 230 and 260 people in that range, we don't we don't know for sure yet. Uh, but at any rate, all of those will be issued as an EB with a serial number following, a three-digit serial number. Um, that will make these uh, a, a bit of an anomaly to the standard issues in that you know it's going to have a different prefix and there's only going to be so many of them that might make them more desirable it might not I don't know but it doesn't really matter this is going to become my daily carry so uh, that does not affect me in any way shape or form uh, I am glad that the offerings have uh, started to be fulfilled and that soon the general public will be able to get their hands on uh, the Sidewinder. Um, I mentioned about the screw. There's the screw. Loosen that screw, pull it out. When you pull it out, you make sure you're in half cock. Rotate the crane, pull that screw out. That comes out. Then you simply replace it with the long rifle cylinder. Um, I don't remember if I've done a couple takes here, but there is an L stamped in the long rifle cylinder. Right there. It's an L right there. You can see. So make sure you don't mix and match. Inadvertently put 22 long rifles in your magnum cylinder. Won't be good. Uh, if you do, I will show you what you will see. Uh, it's going to be. That was noisy. It's going to be totally different than what uh, you would see if a magnum shell was in place. Now, my hand is way on the back. I'm not going to be anywhere near the trigger. I'm going to show you guys. Here's a magnum shell. If you look, nice spacing. Good strike it, strike zone. Okay. Let's pop that out. And we're going to stick a long rifle in there so you guys can see. If you drop a long rifle in, you have a considerable amount of space around the round and then also if you look the round does not come up near as high as a magnum shell would. Let me show you with the magnum shell. Okay. Magnum shell comes up flush with the back of the cylinder. A long rifle in the magnum uh, cylinder is below so it's concave it goes in further. Um, the 22 Magnum has a slightly tapered case, whereas the 22 Long Rifle is straight throughout its length. So keep that in mind if you do order the combination. Um, the Early Bird program, the offering shipped to my FFL dealer was $428 with both the Magnum and Long Rifle cylinders. And you can even see the size of the whole difference there. You get them side by side. So there you go. I've talked for nearly 20 minutes, and I, I, I'm like a lot of you guys. I don't like to sit down and listen to a 20 long minute video. But those interested in the Sidewinder, uh, look at the other videos as well. It's kind of hard not to make a long video about such a beautiful firearm, and um, I hope that those that do uh, acquire one will enjoy it and love it for many, many years to come, as I'm sure I will mine as well as the rest of mine here so and um, there you go this is Zippo it's not going to be a high quality video uh, my computer processing equipment is antiquated so in order for me to do a high definition upload would almost literally take me an entire day so I will compress this and uh, get it uploaded for you guys so this is Zippo this may be my last video before Christmas so I want to wish everyone a very, very Merry Christmas. Uh, it's trying times for a lot of families and a lot of people. Uh, let's make the best of it and uh, remember the reason for the season. Um, in Christ our Lord, God bless. God bless America and God bless all of you. This is Zippo. Later. I'm out.